your boy just got approved for his first luxury travel credit card, the Venture X from Capital One. And I just received the FedEx envelope. So it's time to unbox the newest addition to the collection. We'll go ahead and do that in this video, as well as cover some helpful tips that you need to know about this credit card. Let's go. Welcome back to Tito's Financial Corner, where we talk about credit cards, points and miles, as well as travel. Today, we'll be covering some helpful tips, as well as some essentials that you need to know about the Venture X credit card. From how the annual fee is charged, to how to utilize two of their credits right away, as well as to cover how long it will take you to receive said credit, among other things. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get to the unboxing of this new credit card. Okay, so what's inside the envelope? The first thing that you're going to see is a quick marketing brochure that will really go into detail as far as all the benefits and perks that the credit card has to offer, mainly the multipliers. And obviously, we all know about the 2x multiplier that you would be able to get for all other transactions, which is a great catch-all multiplier. This brochure also does cover the TSA pre-check credit as well as the airport lounge access that would be available to you with this credit card and here's the main event the actual physical credit card i do have to say i do love the design of the venture x credit card it does remind me a bit of my chase sapphire preferred card the back of the card has all the important information as far as your name card number as well as the fact that this is a visa infinite card but yeah, here is the card in its glory. It is absolutely a stunning credit card, if I might add. This really is a beautiful credit card, a very, very well-crafted credit card. And yeah, with those benefits, it definitely earns its spot as one of the best credit cards out in the market right now. However, not everything is perfect with this credit card. Just like any other credit card, it does have some downfalls or items that need to be worked on to make sure that this card is better than what it is today. The first limitation that we have to cover on this credit card is the fact that it no longer offers a restaurant credit with its Priority Pass membership. Back in 2021, when this credit card was launched, it did have that credit where you would be able to get a credit if you utilized your card at a specific restaurant through the Priority Pass membership. However, as of last year, 2023, that credit was next. So that no longer is available. If you're looking for that specific credit, then you would definitely have to look into the Chase Sapphire Reserve card since that card still offers that credit. The other limitation on this credit card is the fact that it's about to lose one of its better benefits. And that is that as of right now, as of this recording, if you book any auto rentals through Hertz on this credit card, you would automatically receive president status, which is their highest level of membership. And that means that you would get automatic upgrades whenever you book a car rental through that company. However, that benefit is set to expire at the end of 2024. And as of this recording, at the beginning of 2024, we don't know how this status is going to be changed. If a different status is going to be set, or if it's just going to be removed altogether and nothing will be added after 2024. If that is the case, then that is a great benefit that this credit card is losing within this year. The other limitation doesn't really impact this credit card per se. However, it is a Capital One limitation, and that is on their airport lounges. As of this recording, Capital One has three beautiful lounges. However, it is very limited when we compare it to other banks like American Express, that has the Centurion Lounge, and that program is built out way, way better than the current Capital One program. But we shall see how many new Capital One lounges will be added within the upcoming years. But as of this recording, it is very limited as far as the Capital One lounges is concerned. And the last note on limitations on this card, and it's much more of a wish, to be honest, is for Capital One to stop cutting the benefits and perks on this credit card. We've already seen them cut enough benefits of this credit card. If they keep doing that, they will definitely start losing a lot of customers that would otherwise be a great fit for this card. And I'm definitely looking at the authorized signers. Please, Capital One, whatever you do, do not touch that. 
that is a great selling point that you have versus American Express as well as Chase. Those two luxury travel credit cards would charge you a fee to add an authorized signer, whereas the Venture X would allow you to add up to four authorized signers for free, and each one of them would get their own Priority Pass membership. But if Capital One continues to cut benefits and perks on this credit card, I could definitely see them cutting the free authorized signers on this card. And that would be a sad day. This is a great time to remind you to hit that subscribe button as well as the like button to help out this channel. With that being said, let's go ahead and cover some aspects that I found on this card after using it for three weeks. As we covered in previous videos, the annual fee on this credit card is $395. That is a very hefty fee, specifically when you think about paying almost $400 just to hold a piece of plastic. So we would definitely have to make sure that we covered that annual fee. And thankfully, I was able to offset most of that annual fee within three weeks of having this credit card. The first thing that you need to know is that with that $395 annual fee, it is charged as soon as you make your first transaction. So Capital One is just looking for that first transaction that's going to hit on the Venture X credit card. It could be a $0.05, cent, $0.25, cent, $25, or $500 transaction. As soon as they see that transaction, they will go ahead and charge you the annual fee on your credit card. So I wanted to see if I could outsmart the system by using the travel credit of $300 right away. And here's what I did. My family and I are going on vacation later on this year we will need a hotel stay for at least one night. So what I ended up doing is, instead of using my ultimate reward points from Chase or my membership reward points with American Express, I decided to utilize the VentureX credit card, go into the Capital One Travel Portal and book that one night stay to see if I would be able to get that $300 credit before the $395 annual fee would hit my account. And it worked flawlessly, if I might add. Now with that said, Always do your research and make sure that the price that you're seeing on any travel portal, whether that's from Capital One, Chase, or Amex, is the same as the one that you would get if you booked the hotel directly with their website. Thankfully, I did find the same price, so whether I booked it directly with Marriott or booked it with Capital One, I was going to end up paying the same price. As soon as I submitted the transaction, the $300 credit kicked in and then was automatically deducted from the final price that I had to pay on the credit card. And the remaining balance that was not covered by the credit automatically gave me a 10x multiplier since, again, it's travel that I booked directly with the Capital One travel portal. And Capital One did not fail. They posted the annual fee as soon as that first transaction hit my account. But I really didn't care. I was essentially being charged an effective annual fee of $95 for this card. And for $95, that's already in the realm of what I'm paying for my Chase Sapphire Preferred card, as well as my World of Higher credit card. So $95 was already a win in my mind. But I did not stop there. If you watch my Watch Me Apply video on this credit card, which you can watch right here, then you notice that I just got a new job that would require me to travel on a more frequent basis. So that meant that I needed to get TSA pre-check in order to be able to skip through the security line. Now, I don't currently have TSA pre-check or global entry. And thankfully, this credit card has a credit for either TSA pre-check or global entry. So I knew it was time for me to get TSA pre-check. Pause. Most people will go ahead and tell you that you should be getting global entry because it's only about $20 more and TSA PreCheck is automatically built into your global entry. However, there are two issues that I have with this. And the first one is that I don't travel internationally. I've only traveled internationally once or twice within the last five years. So being able to skip security lines while traveling internationally was not really at the top of my list, to be honest with you guys. And also the wait time to get global entry could be all over the place. You could either get it in a few weeks or you could potentially have to wait months before you're approved for global entry and thus also TSA pre-check. So again, I don't travel internationally and I already have five domestic flights that are coming up. I needed to get TSA pre-check and I needed to get it right away. So that's why I went and got TSA pre-check instead of global entry. So the second transaction that I wanted to put on my Venture X credit card 
was the TSA pre-check. The whole process took about a week and a half and it costed me about $78. Now, as we covered, the VentureX credit card does have a credit for this transaction. However, I was thinking that it would probably take one to two billing cycles, so anywhere between 30 to 60 days for me to see the credit. And boy, was I wrong. It literally took one week from the transaction posting for me to see my credit right away on the Venture X. So that's right, within a few weeks span, I was able to get both of these credits that honestly took care of most of the annual fee. And if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and cover some quick math. The annual fee posted for $395. Again, my very first transaction was that one night stay at a hotel that I booked directly with the Capital One Travel Portal using my VentureX credit card. So that means that I was able to get that $300 credit right as the transaction was posting. I then got a $78 credit about a week after the TSA pre-check transaction posted. So after those two credits posted, the effective annual fee on this card is $17. So for those $17 that I'm paying as an effective annual fee, I'm gonna be able to utilize the airport lounge access at least eight times for the trips that I already have planned, meaning that I'm gonna be able to relax and eat and drink for those $17. And I'm still gonna get the anniversary bonus of 10,000 miles, which would equal out to being about a $100 credit after having this credit card for a whole year. Now you tell me, how does this now make sense for me to have this credit card? Obviously, your spending and the perks and benefits that you would use are completely different from me. But for $17, I would be getting unlimited access to airport lounges. Just think about this. If I were to go to the airport and either have a quick lunch or just a mixed drink, that right there, that would cost me about or even more than $17. But with that being said, I am so, so happy with this credit card. I am so excited to get it. And I do believe it is a phenomenal credit card. But with that being said, I definitely want to hear from you. What do you think of the Capital One Venture X credit card? Is it a keeper card or would you still prefer a different credit card? Let me know down in the comments below. With that being said, if you found any information useful during this video, please hit that subscribe button as well as the like button. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Adios.